Hi, it's Lynn, and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Today is the day after the wedding, and I noticed one thing while I was making bottles today. I've got nail polish on. Kind of a weird thing. You never have nail polish on when you're working on the farm. But, reminders! So Arnie's picking up uh, the hay that he bailed yesterday. And he's getting all of it out of that uh, one field where it was bailed up and he's creating rows in the yard right now with it because today the intention is to wrap this hay. We would have ideally liked to have dry baled the hay, but um, because we've had so much rain and the grass is quite thick and tall, and right now, um, the past few days, the temperatures have been a lot cooler, it's just not drying enough or in time for the next rain um, to safely dry bale it. Um, if hay is even just slightly damp, like it feels totally dry, but on the inside when you're packing, you know, 800 pounds of hay in, uh, any bit of dampness will cause mold in the future. So we can't take that risk because uh, this is our feed for the year. So we are gonna wrap it and when temperatures do climb and we have a steady window of sunshine, then we'll start dry baling. But whenever there's any type of risk whatsoever, we wrap it in the plastic just to be safe. So someone asked us if uh, Toonie here had a story because she is our only brown sheep. And Toonie stands for Tunis. So quite a few years ago, we had a Tunis ram in here. We thought we'd just try one out because uh, we, we lost a Dorset ram and uh, needed a ram to do a breeding group um, for out of season breeding. So we were in a pinch, so we got a Tunis ram and we bred him and he didn't breed out of season for us. Um, except for one ewe, and that ewe we held her back because she was unique, she was brown, and that is Toonie's mom. So we kept her for quite a few years here, and uh, whenever she had a brown ewe lamb, we held the brown ewe lamb back. She usually had a, a boy and a girl every year, and the boys went on to be rams at other people's farms and uh, the brown ewe lambs ended up here. Um, we only ever kept back, I think. We only had a few, um, actually, no, uh, actually all the brown lambs were males except for Toonie here. So uh, the other females that the mother had were white, so they got sold to people as Dorset crosses. But uh, this one, um, her mom got mastitis this sh last year, so uh, she's gone, and uh, this is her ewe lamb that we held back. So, that's Toonie's story. Hi. Hi, Toonie. And you see, she, she, instead of the black markings like a suffix, she's retained the brown markings of a Tunis. And then we had a ewe in here the other day. I told you she was woolly and uh, she had mastitis so we were going to have to ship her. But uh, I, what I didn't mention was that I thought it was Angel because it had a black dot on her ear. But it wasn't Angel. This is Angel here. Angel's just fine. And Angel... Angel's lamb. He was the really beautiful uh, ram lamb we had that we sent to Nova Scotia on that last shipment. And I think they'll be really happy with him because he was, he was a nice bruiser. Yes, he was Angel. Oh my goodness. Hi. He was a beautiful lamb and he's going to a great home. She's such a sweetheart. Katie. 
Thank goodness it wasn't you. Yes, you're doing just great. You are. Right now, from the first field that we cut, Arnie has all the hay in the yard right now. And I think there were 61 bales in that field. I think it was a 10 acre field. And he is wrapping this hay up to keep it nice and fresh. Ours is an individual bale wrapper. Some people wrap in tubes, but we like to have the bales handy in the yard so that he is not driving through the muck and bad conditions in the winter time. Because in a, with a tube wrapper, um, it would the bales would be wrapped like this in a big line and the line would be one line. It wouldn't be multiple like this. It, it usually goes all the way down the farmer's field. And the only problem with that is you saw the, how muddy it gets, um, especially with the clay ground that we have here. If you stack them in a tube all along the fence line and it's uh, wet conditions or snowy conditions, Getting them out in those conditions can be a real problem because you're driving through muck and you're really destroying your fields. So um, some people that works for them and for us we like them like piled in the yard where it's a lot more solid and extremely handy for the sheep barns. So we opted for the individ individual wrapper. It uses more plastic but uh, I believe the wrapper itself is cheaper than the tube wrapper. And it's like putting saran wrap over your sandwich to keep it fresh longer. And these wrap bales will basically stay fresh until this time next year. You wanna have them fed up within a year. After that, they tend to get a little uh, they go a little mushy. So we try to feed uh, the rat bales fast. And those are our marshmallows. So for each bale, he just drives up and he has a little arm that comes up and scoops that bale. It drops it into the wrapping area and then he'll start to spin it. And when he's done spinning it, I believe he's putting on four layers of wrap. That's what we find works best for us. If you put too little on, um, it's not as airtight and it can break open a little easier. If you put too much on, you're just wasting money on plastic. And with this machine, we have the option of driving it into the field and just dropping them in the field. But um, with our wagons, we found that it's better not to move the wrap bales too often. So if we did them in the field, we would have to pick them up and load them onto the wagon. And then we'd have to pick them up again and load them into piles. Here we just wrap them and put them in piles so we miss one step and you would think that wouldn't matter too much but again if you are picking up and handling these wrap bales too often you can actually break the seal and then you've defeated the purpose when you open it up in the winter time you'll have 
mold on the bale. So you want to handle wrap bales as little as possible. But if you're in a pinch, a thunderstorm's running in, and uh, you don't have time to bring them all back to the yard and wrap them, you can scurry out to the field with the wrapper and wrap them in there because uh, a thunderstorm on the bales is much worse than risking breaking the seal. So it's again, always doing what works best for you at the time with what you have available and weather conditions are always critical as well. These bales are about 40% moisture. That's what we normally guess, but uh, he'll probably take out the uh, probe today and we'll, we'll measure one just to see. We don't like them too wet. Some people wrap them wetter. But again, in this climate, if you wrap them too wet, with our system where we're rolling bales out, uh, that water is very heavy. So if you have, it will increase your bale weight by hundreds of pounds uh, to the point where you basically can't roll them out anymore. And um, another problem with too much moisture in them is that in the winter time here, the bales will freeze. So because of the water being in there, they turn into like giant ice cubes. And again, impossible to roll out and feed. So we found that 40% is basically where we like to have it because that's how we can handle it in our feed system. 40% um, is almost dry hay but not quite. If you made it, if you just left it like that, it would mold. So we're gonna go get the probe to see what the moisture level actually is in here. Oh, now if we had smell-o-vision, you could smell the how the fresh hay smells. I'm allergic to hay, so I don't take too deep a breath because just walking in here makes me sneeze. But he's going to get his probe and we'll just, because people always ask what our moisture level is, so we're just going to give her a poke. It's laying in the field for one day. So. Working. 40% moisture right on. So the reader goes up to 40%. Can you see it in the sun? I think so. Yep. And and if it hit if it hits 20%, it's just to be a caution. That means after 20% it could act up, probably a little bit. If it was dry. If it was dry. So you want you have to be below 18 for the store it dry. It sits there. So if you hit 20, you hit the yellow. And from 20 to 25 percent is yellow. That's probably going to act up a little bit, okay, in the hay. But after 20 percent, they say it's going to mold. After 25 percent. After 25 percent, it's going to mold, guaranteed. Yeah. So, so that's the red zone. So it's color coded. You don't need to even read the numbers. No. So what I'm looking for right now is I like to I like to keep the, my wrap hay in around the 40% moisture, give or take. I don't want to go much higher than that. So we're going to just do this down here, and we're going to test it. And it reads actually uh, this one here actually reads uh, 35. 35 percent moisture. Okay. So you definitely got to wrap that, or that's probably going to mold, for sure. Guaranteed mold right up solid. And now, to, for me, stick it in the middle of the bale, which to me would be the wettest. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so it's a 40% in the middle. Yeah. So, so that's because it's being packed in there. What's probably happening is, right, as, as this bale was made last night, is the outside of the bale is probably staying a little cooler because it's getting the oxygen, and inside in the core, 
is where the furnace is. It's getting the most heat. So that's why it's probably testing a little higher. But the but the moral of the story is that bale is 40% it's going to mold. You have to wrap it. You got to wrap it. You cannot dry bale that. Even though it, you think when you feel it by hand, you think that that's really dry, but it is not. Well, it guaranteed that you will have a moldy bale by the time you go to feed it. So I probed it to the outside there, and I, I lost 5% uh, moisture. Yeah. And it's probably already starting to dry down. Yeah. But that hay's, before that hay goes dry, it's going to mold. So, so when, when we used to milk cows, and I guess it would, it would probably work about the same way with sheep. So with cows, if your, if your haylage was 60% moisture or 50% or higher, the cow was actually consuming a lot of water. So in her rumen, she would be uh, getting kind of loaded down with moisture and not eating enough dry matter. So all the milk is in the dry matter, in, in, the, in the protein and, and what she gets out of the dry matter, not in the water, in the, in the moisture in the bale. So if I can get the bale down to, let's say 40% moisture, 35, 40% moisture, moisture, she's gonna eat a lot more dry matter. And I would think, it's the same as milk cows, the more dry matter I can get into the cow, into her stomach to digest, the more milk she's going to produce and milk. Uh, Water is not going to give her probably a lot of milk. It's, it's, it's the value of the, of the hay and the protein and the fat in that hay that's going to give her extra milk. And uh, she, can, not, she can go to the drinker to get the water. Yeah, so I'm not a nutritionist, so maybe I said that wrong. But when I used to have a TMR system for, for dairy cows, uh, when, that, when that hay got too wet, my milk production in the tank went down right away. When I got the moisture more drier in the hay, my milk production went higher. So I'm thinking it's the same rule of thumb with sheep. First field is all wrapped. And before he stacks it and stores it, he's out in the field raking the next uh, batch. That's the first field done. All the hay's off it. The bales have been picked up. This is our little runway between the fields. And right now, Arnie's raking the next field. So as I mentioned in the other video, if a farmer is working in the fields, you'll always find seagulls following. And we live, you know, about, I'm guessing a 15 minute drive from Lake Ontario. And yet somehow, Seagulls seem to know when farmers are doing their work in the fields and they are always out here. They never miss it when you're here, but uh, when you're not working in the fields, you would never see a seagull out this way. So when the mower cuts the hay, it kind of lies in flat strips. And if we walk across this hay here, you'll see the difference. See how that's all kind of flat and laid out? It's still in rows, but when he brings the rake through, it start, it clumps it up, and it will flip it a bit. So the stuff that was underneath comes up to the top, so it can dry a little bit better, because underneath, obviously, it's against the ground and will stay damp longer. So raking it up will expose it more for drying. And now it's gone into the perfect bale size row. So the baler, when he's driving it, he doesn't have to be going back and forth like this, trying to get it all to fit in. It automatically fits in perfectly for him to drive straight along there. And looking at how all these little furrows are I'm saying we got a lot of hay here and it actually looks pretty nice it's this is mainly grasses but it's uh, nice and fine still it hasn't gone super coarse and uh, a lot of years when you're cutting hay because you are cutting hay at a dry time this cut grass often looks yellow underneath um, because it's already drying down, but everything still looks nice and green. Now, apparently the next two weeks we got a major heat wave coming in, so 
we'll probably be complaining about that next. Um, but actually right now the temperature, if I could have any temperature, it would be what it is today. I think it's like 20 degrees. Just a bare wind today and not a cloud to be seen. So if you can see from here, he's coming along and he's taking both of these rows and making them into one. I'm gonna leave it till uh, tomorrow afternoon, noon. Really? And we're gonna drive out. I wish you drive. And you hope it doesn't rain tonight. It's not gonna rain until uh, Tuesday. Okay. It does look pretty dry. I felt it's a little damp from the underneath. Oh, that, 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 would be, that would be dry in an hour. Feel it. It doesn't even feel wet. I didn't drive out the whole thing. Okay.
got some bales ready to feed tonight. We got all the wrap bales stacked up and we're ready to start again tomorrow. So for now, we're going to say goodbye and hope you join us again next time for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.